If you ever boot up an old DX11 only to get this error message, change RAM battery, you may be hearing strange noises and be frustrated. To fix this, you're going to need a screwdriver, a Phillips, uh, some desoldering wick, some fine solder wire, and a new battery or a new battery clip. This one has little pens so that it can be inserted into a circuit board. You're also going to need some clippers to cut the wire ends, some rubber gloves for touching the more sensitive parts, some wire strippers, some spare wire, and of course a new battery. You're going to need a soldering iron. Here we have the world's most advanced soldering iron. Turning it on now so that it can boot up and connect to Wi-Fi. You want to flip the synthesizer over on something soft so it doesn't get damaged. Notice there are two types of screws, one of which connects the back panel to the synthesizer's body. Remove the screws that hold the back panel in place and put the back panel to the side. Here you see the V2 insignia, um, the motherboard, the back of the RAM cartridges. You've got screws along the edge that hold the motherboard uh, down. You can begin to remove those. You'll also notice there are, are wires along each edge of the board. You'll need to snap those out. Before we flip this over, I want to show you these two leads are the ones that we'll need to remove to replace the battery. If you pull the board up, you'll see there it is. It's soldered into place. To remove the clips, you'll need to insert a flathead screwdriver under the edge. Here I've put a piece of cardboard down and I'm going to lay the motherboard on top of it. This way I can freely solder without burning anything. Here I'll melt the solder and use the soldering wick to remove the excess. Once all the solder is gone, the holes should be clear. Here I put some wire leads in and connected them to the battery holder. It doesn't look great, but it'll work. Let's take a minute to look at the motherboard before we flip it back over. Here we have a Hewlett Packard chip. Of course, the bigger chips are made by Yamaha, and there's several of them. If you look closely, there's chips by Toshiba, Mitsubishi, and Motorola. It's really cool to look inside of this thing and see all the little leads running everywhere, all the different parts put together, all by hand, quite a long time ago. You want to visually inspect that you replace the motherboard, the screws, and the wires back to where they're supposed to be. Just give them a little push to make sure it's snug. Here's the battery I'm going to use. I'll use a rubber glove to put it in place. I've snapped it into the battery holder. And now I'll use some anti-static bubble wrap, like this, to make sure that it doesn't bounce around or touch anything. When you boot the synthesizer up, you'll notice that there's no longer an error message about the battery, but all of the user-defined presets are now written in an alien language. To fix this, first select Memory Protect and press the No key. This turns off Memory Protect for the user-defined patches. Now, to reset one of the patches, hit Utility, go to Initialize, button 28, It'll say init voice, and you say yes. It says, are you sure? Say yes. And now you're left with a basic patch that's just a sine wave. Here I've selected an organ patch. If I hold down the store button, it'll ask me where I want to store it. I can select one of the user presets here, I've selected three, and if I release store now, 
you'll see number three is the organ sound and I can start from there. <laughs> 